The only real Asian equivalent of the Nile Croc would have to be the notorious Mugger Crocodile, which is slightly higher than the Salty in Fatal Deaths. And today we will be taking a look at this fascinating crocodilian, and why it deserves more respect and protection in the wild. The modern Mugger Crocodile evolved anywhere from 4 to 5 million years ago, and is closely related to the Siamese Crocodile and the far larger Saltwater Crocodile. They can be distinguished from the saltwater crocodile by their far more distinct scales and by having the broader snout of any member of Crocodilus. Which isn't the reason its name is Mug, in reference to its face. Mugger is a corruption of the name Marga, meaning water monster, which honestly is a sick name. The Mugger crocodile certainly isn't the largest crocodile in Asia, only growing up to a maximum of 5 meters in males, females are far smaller at around 2.5 meters. Their ranges are rather northern, meaning they have adapted to have a burrowing behaviour to maintain body heat when temperatures drop below 5 degrees or exceed 35 degrees. This means they are one of the few crocodilians that has a greater risk of hypothermia. Not only that, but the mugger crocodile also has to survive droughts that can greatly damage its population. These animals can be found in a variety of environments, such as rivers, marshes, lakes, and even inhabit human-made reservoirs. They are rather terrestrial, walking for miles over land for prey or a water source, comparable in ability to the Cuban crocodile, which you can learn about in another video of mine. Mugger crocodiles' adjustable nature also applies to their prey items, with different habitats offering a variety of meals. For example, the mugger crocodile will often hunt turtles in the wet season and tortoise in the dry. Indian panaglin and even pythons are off the menu for a large adult mugger crocodile. Water buffaloes and cattle also aren't off the menu. One unique behaviour the mugger crocodile has that no other reptile has been recorded of having is to set traps for prey. During water bird nesting season, the mugger crocodile will apparently balance twigs upon its snout in order to lure a poor bird to their demise. This shows one of the only recorded examples of crocodilians using tools, with it also being suggested that the American alligator may exhibit similar behaviours. An interesting example of the mugger crocodile showing emotional empathy has occurred only a month ago, when scientists observed a dog enter a water with three mugger crocodiles. It was being chased by a pack of feral dogs. Fortunately, these mugger crocodiles seemingly nudged the dog to safety across the other side of the lake. Though this cross-species emotional empathy may in fact just be some sort of weird occurrence in nature, it does perhaps support the idea that mugger crocodiles and even other crocodilians could support emotional empathy. More research is needed though. Their apex predator status doesn't make them immune to predation. Bengal tigers and Asiatic lions aren't strangers to making a filling meal of a mature mugger crocodile. They also have to coexist with other crocodilians, saltwater crocodiles, and the gharial. So how does the mugger do this? First off, the mugger crocodile makes up for its intraspecific competition by being aggressive to any other member of its species. This has led to young muggers living in small groups away from the adults. And once they do reach adulthood, male muggers will often fight for territory, vocalizing, head slashing, and tail thrashing until one of them backs down, or a fight begins. While the gharial mainly feeds off fish, when one is about, the mugger can prioritize hunting marine reptiles, such as turtles, or can go onto land for a panaglin or monkey. There is no real aggression between the species, and they coexist fairly peacefully. Furthermore, they do not compete for burrows or basking spots during the day, as the gharial prefers lower land from the water, while the mugger crocodile prefers more distant nesting and basking sites. Third, mugger crocodiles fortunately occupy different niches to the saltwater crocodile. Mugger crocodiles are mainly restricted to freshwater habitats of the Indian subcontinent, while salties are usually found in saltwater or brackish waters, making times when they do inhabit the same area very rare and never with conflict. The mugger crocodile is classified as vulnerable by the IUCN, a status which changes depending on the region or country we observe. For example, in certain parts of the world, these crocodilians are massively declining. The droughts of the 90s and 2000s led to complete decline of mugger crocodiles in Iran. 
now there are only around 200 left. The government has taken measures to protect these animals, with 100 million riles, or 1,040 British pounds, being fined to anyone who kills a mugger crocodile. Unfortunately, situations are more dire in Bangladesh, Bhutan and Myanmar, where they are mostly locally extinct, though do have captive populations other than Myanmar, which has completely eradicated these reptiles. Luckily, since 1978, the Indian government has established 28 protected areas to reintroduce them until 1994, when offspring production was stopped. Today, there are around 5,000 mugger crocodiles in India, making up 62% of the 8,000 adults recorded worldwide today. Though the law lacks any active, protective action against poaching, a permit is required to shoot the marsh croc, and these animals have been protected ever since 1948. Hey, Editor George here. Apparently 3.9% of my viewers are from India, so if you have any cool stories about the mugger crocodile, we would really appreciate that. We're always interested in learning new stuff. There are around 3,000 Sri Lankan mugger crocodiles, with ecotourism allowing a great incentive for locals to protect these enigmatic creatures. One of the main reasons these animals are killed is for their skin, which is used in the leather industry. Though this trade is banned, and may not still be a valid threat for the Mwago crocodile, it does show a massive cause for their decline in the 60s and 70s. Unfortunately, the Mwago crocodile will attack any human that enters their territory. This is mainly due to the high amount of competition in their area, with many other predators taking up resources. But usually, any kill will not be eaten. This gives a far more positive view on these animals, since deaths that often occur are seen as defensive and not predatory. Unfortunately, around half of all mugger crocodile attacks are fatal, making these animals a deadly force of nature not to be messed with. In 2018, around 18 people were killed by mugger crocodiles. This death toll is not very high in comparison to the Nile crocodile, but still shows that they are a deadly force. Overall, around 1,000 people are killed by crocodiles each year, so they don't exactly add that much to the death toll. This does not make them any less of a threat, and make education needed. The largest threat of the mugger crocodile is the rapid industrialization of India. Thanks to this, many mugger crocodile habitats have been destroyed and polluted. As well as this, agriculture has also expanded, leading to more poaching of the animal. It is commonly killed by fishing nets, and finds itself in fishing villages where it is attacked and killed by locals. These animals are really under threat of a lot of different factors, and maybe one day we'll see the Indian government start up their conservation program again to expand their populations further. For now though, they thrive on reserves. The votes for our next video are Garvey Day, Messy Stops, and The Cayman. Feel free to vote for whichever one you'd like. Thank you very much to Goji Berry for being our T-Rex tier Patreon and donating to the channel. He's a legend and has helped us out a ton. If you join the Patreon, you get these videos a week early. And I think that's a pretty good perk. You also get some other stuff like script insights. You can DM me directly. Feel free to join my Discord. We're doing events on there now. Uh, there's tons of discussion, new channels and stuff like that. And of course, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and whatever other platforms I'm on. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye for now.